Hello everybody, welcome to the season finals match between Strider84 and his lizard men versus Kian Dare with his Imperial Nobility. And in the booth with me is Adam Savage. Hello. Hey, hello. Thanks, thanks for having me here, Jimmy. This is great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining me. This is going to be cool. The uh, fellow fellow official caster just coming on to do this random match for the YouTube. So thank you very much. Yep, I took some time out from making some kind of wacky laser in LA <laughs> to be here for this. So, hey, hey thanks for having me. And uh, no, no, it's going to be a really great um, mat, yeah, one to match up to watch unfold here. You know, Kiander versus Strider. I think, you know, we're already kind of talking about what's going to be coming our way courtesy of the next... Uh, yeah, the season finals and um, I'm excited to join the team as well you know meet the community and kind of be part of this too and I, I chatted to um, Dave Lowe last night as well a little bit and we're going to get to know each other a bit too so it was, um, it was real fun fantastic um, oh god yeah I've got the wrong icons on right bear with me <laughs> so uh, yeah obviously for the uh, for the finals actually this is perfect doing it here anyway um, for the finals yeah you will be seeing these kind of icons for the skills and i use a mod to change them to blood ball 2 because that's what you know i've played for um eight years and what's that's what i was used to so now i'm going to finally try and have to learn the new <laughs> the new icons <laughs> and, and 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 the classic yellow and slightly darker yellow as well which is really helpful <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 and yeah and funny enough these are like these are one of the you know they, they've copied the uh, Games Workshop miniatures, tabletop miniatures, almost one-to-one. -one. And, you know, they've all, they've all got slightly different feathers, but it's not the easiest thing to tell apart, is it? The slightly different feathers. So, uh, no. Yeah, this once, is... Once, once, you know, once you know, you know, but it's, it, it, it's not the clearest of things. But still, we move. We move. Yeah. Um, talk, talk about this, um, this, uh, this match, then we've got you know, Kian Dare Strider. I mean... Lizard men, obviously, we know very strong, um, uh, and I think you know imperial nobility. Do, 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 you know, does Kiander stand a chance here? Do you think it's just going to be? It's, I mean, a lizard men just too strong ultimately. It, he's he's going to have a chance because it's you know there's a lot of luck and the you know he's really good at blood ball, but they're both really good at blood ball. So uh, yeah, it's it's it anything can happen. So so an old world alliance are worse than lizard men, but old world alliance have more skills. You can see. Um, Strider's got six Bloxaurus here, and uh, Kian Dare's got four guard, a leader, a dodge, a tackle, a dirty player, and a block. So he's got like he's got way more skills. Well, I say it's way more, three more. <laughs> um, and a block ogre is like you know that's a double, so it's uh, it's really powerful to get block on his ogre. And uh, but yeah, like it it does favor it does favor the lizards. But yeah, I mean everyone's got a chance. Even you know even Inarian could win the whole tournament with his with his black orcs, which are uh, you know not not the best, shall we say? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean I mean you you, you say it so so often. Uh, you know anything can happen in Blood Bowl. I mean this this is this is the great thing about this. Like you know we have predictions where you think it's going to go all the way and kind of go all the way to the final and win this, but on the day the dice do the talking, and you never know. Yeah, and there are some dice there. Double skull. From uh, and he, he eats the double skull, and uh, that's that is going to encourage uh, Strider to try and pile in here. I think uh, watched a few of Strider's first few games, and he was he was like very very conservative, didn't really want to engage until the last second. But with that early double skulls, he might try and you know jump on it, and uh, we might see a lot of contact early. We like that though. We like that, Jimmy. We like the contact. <laughs> yeah. We're here to see. <laughs> Maybe not ball contact, but at least, at least, I think we could see some heavy contact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's interesting as well. Like some, yeah. You know, I was looking at um, different teams and like you know, you know, skills, re rolls, and such as well. I think it was, I think Elliot's got five re rolls in his setup. He does. Which is yeah. obviously, yeah. He's, I think she's, which I guess is a, you know, giving himself the the, the most options possible to ensure that he gets uh, gets the victory to a degree. Yeah, well, uh, the, the thing is, in this format, you've got overtime. Uh, normally in tabletop, which, you know, as you said before we uh, started the YouTube video, that is Strider's normal area of expertise is, is like this kind of team, these kind of teams, but on tabletop. And on tabletop, you, you don't, well, almost never play overtime. And in this, um, if the draw, like if it's a draw after 16 turns, they play another eight turns. 
And in that kind of format, having more rerolls is just so much better. You know, we, we've seen loads of games go to overtime and one side has one or zero rerolls left. And, you know, there's a good chance that when it goes to overtime with Elliot, he'll have two or three left <laughs> and his opponent will have none. And that's going to give him a huge advantage in overtime games. Yeah, massively so. I think I was, I was chatting to Andy last night. I think there's a, was it the Welsh Tabletop Championships coming up or something as well? Um, that that does ring a bell. I, I'll I be honest. Something. Yeah, I'll be honest. I'm I'm not too, I'm not too much of a fan of tabletop. <laughs> um, Andy's Andy's you know plays it a lot, and you know a lot of people play it a lot. But uh, yeah. a lot of people play both. You know, there's fumble, which uh, I don't know. I don't know how how much we should mention fumble ever, to be honest. But <laughs> seeing as this is just on my YouTube, we could we could get because so basically, fumble isn't blood ball at all. It's fantasy football. It's got nothing at all to do with actual blood ball. Okay, <laughs> but um, you know, there's there's this guy called K Fog, and he plays on fumble, blood ball two, and and tabletop. So he's like the one that's dominated in all. Whereas usually people will like you know mostly play one like uh, for example Crucifer's mostly just played Blood Bowl uh, like the video games two and three, whereas yeah. you know and, and Stride is more of a like a tabletop and fumble guy. I think Andy hasn't played much fumble, um, mm -hmm. but has played a fair amount of tabletop. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 well, yeah. I mean, the, the, the tabletop for me as well. I mean, would you would you remember your your kind of first entry point? I mean, talk, talk me back. Can it me through a history of Jimmy Fantastic here? Do you oh remember kind of the first moment? The things, the things for you personally was it kind of like a moment that you kind of things just clicked and you went, yeah, this is this is a little bit of me. I, I think that I'm going to focus a lot of my attention on this. <laughs> um, in the in the game, was there a particular moment, a particular kind of yeah? To talk me through a brief history of Jimmy Fantastic. Well, do you know what? This is pretty pretty funny, seeing as uh, the message that you sent earlier the other the other day uh, yeah. about Hero Quest. Um, oh my God! <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> when I was a kid, I, uh, my parents got me Hero Quest, and there was like a little leaflet in it, and it had uh, like painted Chaos Warriors and stuff, and they were like, you can get these from Games Workshop, and you know you you paint them all and stuff, and I was like. Oh my God, this looks amazing. So, uh, oh yeah, he's blitzing the Crocs. So I, uh, so uh, from that, I went to my local store and that store had Blood Bowl. And then I saw Blood Bowl, this was in 1990, and I saw the box art and it was like American football with like, you know, a big ogre on the front and stuff and orcs and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, like Hero Quest, but American football, this has got to be the best thing ever. And uh, pretty much from, yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty much from that moment, it was when I was, I was all Blood Bowl all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, I'm done with this Hero Quest nonsense. It's Blood Bowl for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was it was a lot deeper, right? Like Hero Quest was uh it was I thought it was a pretty fun game. I don't know you know, at the time I enjoyed it, I don't know how actually technically great it was or whatever, but it was I guess it got like a pretty similar, right? And it might have been really dicey. I've got no idea about Hero Quest how actually good it was, mm -hmm. but it was cool, wasn't it? It was very cool for a kid. Oh god. I don't remember. I don't remember many many ball games that kind of and about the chat as well here. But that kind of time period too. Hero Quest just felt like you know you had your classics like your your monopolies, your game of lives and stuff. But Hero Quest just felt like a, a like a level above because that's when I kind of found kind of um, I, I guess like the NES. I kind of felt like kind of like retro kind of kind of more classic games. And you had barbarians and and you had like dwarfs, elves, wizards. It, it kind of like it almost felt like kind of like a, a video game in a way. I think there was a kind of a nice kind of. Um, Transcendence from like the, a board game to to kind of like uh, to games and vice versa. But I, Hero Quest for me was like a yeah was a really special game. There was a game as well that came out that my dad and I used to play all the time. It was called Chainsaw Warrior. Do you remember this game? Oh my god, yeah, that's games. That's Games Workshop as well. Yeah. Oh my I god, never I played can't... it. <laughs> oh, you do, do I please get it on your? You can get it on your your mobile now. It's a mobile game now. They've made a mobile version. It's pretty oh. good. Um. But it was, yeah, if anyone in chat doesn't know, like, so this is a game where it's basically a one player game, too, which is really great. And I think the, I think the, okay, I've got, I've got up here, the year's 2032. Okay, this is what, so we're, we're talking like, we're only like, what, eight years away. Um, long story short, a warp, okay, this, this is, this is, this is what it says is the, the plot line. A warp has opened in the old municipal buildings in the heart of Manhattan. Bizarre creatures flood our dimension with one leader called the darkness and basically you've got to like spend the next i think you've got an hour time limit to kind of dice roll your way through 
to the darkness and defeat it. It, it was just so it was just so good oh my god but it was really hard to actually get to the darkness in the first place and you have like a kind of a certain weaponry you kind of level i mean there was there was loads to it but it's one of those few games that actually you play you had like 50 minutes or 60 minutes to save the world or new york or something it was it was oh it's great that's pretty amazing yeah i wonder if i wonder if doom copied off it <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely <laughs> that's amazing yeah, it was really great. It was a good time. It was a good time. Because, yeah, then as well, playing, having a one-player game that you can totally immerse yourself in is great. But, yeah, the mobile version came out. I couldn't believe. And I played it. And I was like, dude, this is actually bloody good. Like, I'm really into this. This is amazing. And it's a, and it's a really good kind of um, uh, iteration of the board game, but in mobile form. Because sometimes it kind of sucks. The trend, You can't really, you know, it doesn't feel the same. This was really good. It's really good. Yeah, that's amazing. I wasn't a here, mate. Sorry, I've got way off, of, way off into Chainsaw Warrior territory. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, so yeah, we've got two big stuns here, and uh, he's crashed in, but not the way he'd like. He's crashed in with mostly skinks, so it's going to be a bit easier to escape and stuff. And like you know, he's got all these saurus over here, but um, and these both got stuck on this, on this bodyguard. So he would have loved to have got an extra saurus in, but next turn he could, right? So next turn we could have two more saurus entering the fray. This is a uh, pretty tricky, pretty tricky for. Uh, oh my god, he's got to reroll that. This is pretty, pretty tricky for Key and to sort out. <laughs> did, you, did you naturally assume that he that that Key and would be on the back? I mean, this is uh, was it was it Blood Bowl two that goblins were his preferred um, like faction? Yes, yeah, that's yeah, correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, he, th this is what happens with lizards basically. Like they. Um, they 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 can like play off and just like play safe for a while but eventually they're going to crash in probably because you know they've got a team of seven strength four plus so so all you can do is try, try and hold them off as much as possible but eventually they're going to come in and, and when they do it's it's you know it's, it's bad times basically <laughs> <laughs> it's bad times it's bad times <laughs> yeah totally in control Dimmy. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, Hamas, yeah. <laughs> oh, Zakara, thanks for the raid, absolutely glorious. Um, love a raid, love a raid. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, Zakara. There you um, go. When you're, when you're, when you're, Jimmy, when you're playing um, defensive line-wise as well, do you kind of tend to always set up in exactly the same way? Do you kind of, like, kind of, you kind of alternate depending on who you're playing up against? Like, is it kind of like a... You've got a, a tried and tested formula that you tend personally to always um, bring to each matchup. Like, how do you how do you tend to how do you tend to roll? Well, that's that's interesting. There's some setup videos. There you go. <laughs> that was a great setup. I'm straight that. in those. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, I've got a setup guide playlist there, and uh, yeah, so there's a few. So basically, how it changes is there's 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 a select few that I've got. You know, in my playbook kind of idea. Um, but then, like, situationally, it'll change, you know, like, for example, if you're 2-0 up or you're 1-0 up or you need to equalise, you need to, like, if you're 1-0 behind and on, on defence, you might have to play more aggressively, so you'll have to change, you'll have to set up differently then if your player's down, if their player's down. So, like, lots of things will feed into it. But, uh, yeah, generally people have, like, there's there's really two big ones that people set up in and, uh, you know, Strider set up in the, the, format, the most popular formation this half. And then, you know, it, they're not that critical. The setups aren't that critical, but what they can lose you a game. They can't really win you a game, but they can lose you a game if you, like, do a really terrible one. And then it's more into, like, you know, after the first turn. It's it's really whether you're, whether you're playing, like, aggressively or passively. And uh, lizards can afford to just go either way, but generally people like to, like, you know, play passive for a few turns. And then, and then when there's a bit of an opening, like this one, right, those two stuns, that's when, when you get a little bit of luck, that's when you then try and go forward and push and push in on them and stuff. Yeah. Do you find a lot of players as well will kind of get that initial the, the touchdown and they'll kind of make, they'll kind of just hold that, that one, that one zero and kind of just defend, 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 or is it going for broke and trying to score as, as much as possible to, to, to ensure the, uh, the victory as well? What's, what's kind of been the kind of like the, 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 the kind of meta this season for players? Um, so it, it depends on the there's a bit of there's an element of coach um preference and then there's mm -hmm. also an element of like racial matchup 
So, for example, Crystal Hunter is a bit of a lunatic, um, as we'll see in this tournament. He play, you know, like some people just play safe and, and you know, very solid and safe. Like my, myself, I am pretty solid, safe player. Elliot's a pretty solid, safe player. Artemis is a safe, solid player. Ch Crucifer is. But then you've got people like Inarion and uh, Crystal Hunter and Olivier Delac who missed out. And those guys are like basically lunatics, right? The way they play, like you know, lu lunatic not to be disparaging. Like you know, if you know poker, like that that kind of that kind of lunatic, which is like good, right? It's a good way to play in poker, but um, well, not unpredictable. Good. Yeah, yeah, and just just like they just go for everything, and like because they've got skate, because they've got skate, they generally specialize in Skaven or Wood Elves, those kind of teams, and uh, so they tend to yeah, they do tend to try and go go to and look because if they don't they might just get ground down to dust and, and just lose um you know it, it, there's no point there's no point uh scoring one if all your team dies right so so they, they try to get this they try to go two nil up and uh and then kill the game whereas teams like imperial nobility if things go wrong for them then uh you know like they can't they can't push as much as other teams. <laughs> so like there's agility teams and bash teams mm. and like bash teams can't really push as much as agility teams. Lizard are both. Lizard men are just both. Lizard can just do anything they want. So but generally you're just trying to defend. You're just trying to defend your drive. That it's it's pretty favoured that the person who who receives will score on turn eight. That's like the the default assumption that everybody makes. And so you're right. just trying to stop them generally you're just trying to stop them scoring. Um and then it's but Teams like Skaven do quite a good job of stopping them scoring by scoring themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems it seems that dwarfs are kind of like a solid a solid bet or investment when it comes to when it comes to this too. But inevitably, you know, they, is it is it the they, they struggle against is it lizard men they struggle against? It what? is yes yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah. Though we saw a game uh, last night was Hiru versus Smilzo, mm -hmm. and. Hiru just like killed about three Saurus and and then the game suddenly became very easy. So, you know, it's uh the the dice are ultimately and, and players, well, you know, Smilzo Smilzo made a few mistakes. And so a few mistakes and a few dice and then an even an un, an almost unwinnable matchup like Dwarves versus Lizardmen becomes uh very yeah. very winnable. I think he wants to dodge this guy off at the end. And He's debating where he's going to push this guy, and then he's also debating what he's going to do with this fella. It's, he kind of needs to keep him back here, otherwise he's relying on him standing up. So he probably has to keep these two here, and I think he'll probably dodge him out. And uh, he might even rush to go the extra two squares to here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate that. Ah, no, he can't. Disregard. <laughs> <laughs> He, he might just dodge away. He might not. It's 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 tricky because you got to weigh up like you know. It's not very likely to work the dodge, and then it's how how good is it working? But how how good is if it works? Because it's not bad if it fails, basically. <laughs> yeah. Like they're the two things you need to think of, of how how bad is it if it fails and how good is it if it works. Honestly, I'm a glasses half full kind of person. How good is it when it works? Yeah, Do you know what I mean, that's that's how I roll. Yeah, that that's how that's how like Crystal tends to roll and and Livia Delac and Anarian, but that's why we think they're madmen because everything fails in Blood Bowl. <laughs> everything fails all the time, but um, but you know it, it does work sometimes as well. Yeah, it's it, but it, that that is what it is. And uh, I mean, you you say that J five and yeah, Smilzo look, Smilzo had the worst dice, no doubt about it. But he did he did do some ordering mistakes and things like this. That if he had if he had you know, if he'd done those things right, he would have been in a better position after he had the terrible dice. <laughs> and uh, he could have used his Croxigo better to uh, make use of good dice. So it's interesting. Mm. Is that, on the, on the uh, official broadcast this Saturday, is our first matchup Andy versus Artemis? It does appear so, yeah. It does appear that yeah. Versus, yeah, they are hard scheduled. So that's pretty cool because, uh, you know, obviously both streamers and both very good at Blood Bowl. Um, the good thing about stream is, like, the weird thing about Blood Bowl is, like, you don't really know how any good anybody is <laughs> because, because like, there's a lot of stats and stuff, you know, and you can be like, oh, this guy's got this win rate and stuff. But, you know, ultimately, none of that really matters, and most people just judge people by how they see them play. 
So the good thing about Andy and Art is, you know, oh wow, people have seen them play a lot. So so we've got a pretty good handle on like how good they are. People mm. seen, people have seen Strider play a lot. People have seen Kiandero, like the the people from like Chalices, like Inari and Chunter. We've seen them a lot from the Blood Bowl two playoffs. So those kind of where guys like Smilzo is a bit of an unknown quantity. So so like you know, uh, obviously they're, they're you know they wouldn't be here if they weren't good. But we don't really know how good because you know it's it's not just like pointing to a win rate and saying like you know how you can with maybe maybe other games or or sports or whatever. It, it's pretty much mostly people just rank people on the eye test because at the end of the day there's not that much difference between you know Crystal Inarian, uh, Elliot, and the art. You know there's there's so there's so little in it that people just like to. Uh, you know, have their own unfounded opinions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, does it? I mean, do you, do you think it comes down to RNG more than anything when it comes just in those situations? Oh wow! Um, in individual matches, uh, there's a bit that it it comes down to mistakes, and the dice are probably the two mm. biggest things. And like, there there is the occasional really cool thing that people do. Um, like I did a really cool move in in uh, there was the NAF kickoff event where I did like this, this surf like uh, if you knock a player off the pitch it's the surf mm. and I did a, and and uh, so when you push people if you push them into other people uh, they call that a chain push so I did a great uh, I did a great like chain push into a surf and that was really cool and some other good players might not have spotted it and. Uh, Elliot would have been a better example, so I wasn't just looking like a big head. Um, Elliot did a really great thing um, in his uh, play-in qualifier, where he like he chain pushed like this guy about four squares for he, he chained this guy through like four players to push him forward. And uh, you know, I think there, there was maybe like two or three people out of the whole sixteen that would have been able to make that play. So I thought that was fantastic from Elliot. Um, so oh. like moments of brilliance. Moments of terror, and then also to so to bring it back to myself because I love doing that. Um, I made a terrible mistake versus Galentio, who's like I think he's I think he might be playing Friday. Um, I made a terrible mistake versus him and like lost it because of my mistake. Even though there was a bunch of dice as well, if I don't make that mistake, I win the game. You know, so so like it it, it is coming down to moments of brilliance, terrible mistakes, and then also dice. The the dice come in with like say Andy's game where he. He, he like killed 10 of the opposing team <laughs> so classic, you know classic Andy classic <laughs> yeah yeah you, you know I think you would have won you would have won that game if you'd had those dice <laughs> <laughs> oh my god look at that a 1 in 81 block and uh, yeah that wow. is that is bad news with Kianda oh sorry I don't know what's going on right never mind disregard um, yeah so that was really unlucky and now even though he's got the stun, this if this guy goes down. Oh no, it doesn't even need that guy. Okay, yeah, no, this is really bad. <laughs> this is really bad. It's it's not over. <laughs> Don't say it's over, but um Oh yeah, this is really bad. It's not over till it's over. Yeah. I, I haven't watched I haven't watched the Rocky films for a long time. It's been a long it's been a minute. <laughs> it's been a minute. Yeah. Did they ever make a Blood Bowl like animated series? Um, no, they've made they've made well not to, not to my knowledge maybe they've uh, they've made like uh, graphic novels and, uh, okay. and normal novels as well. I think I think they've actually just got I think they've actually written novels and graphic novels for for Blood Bowl. Yeah, I think so. They've been they've been tempted, Jimmy, to say I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take this this world of Blood Bowl to another level. I'm gonna design. <laughs> I would love to see it. I'd love to see what Jimmy Fantastic had in mind for these for these teams. I'd love to see that. <laughs> I I would, yeah, I would. Um, what is a one in eighty one? Oh yeah, okay, okay. Oh well, here we go. Here we go for the new people because I guess we want to like you know. There's a bit of the new player element as well, right? Um, so mm -hmm. if you uh, when you're making a block, it's six sided dice, one or a two, or bad. Um, sometimes <laughs> a one is always bad a two is sometimes bad so for this particular player a one or a two was bad so it's a one in three chance of failing then because he had two dice at it it be, you know it's a then he needs they need to both be a one in three so it's one in three times one in three so it's a one in nine and then because he put in a reroll 
it became a one in nine times a one in nine. So only one in 81 chances does that, only one in 81 times does that thing fail. And it failed and it's, uh, you know, it's probably cost him the game. But it's not over yet. He's managed to not clear anything here with his with his blocks and stuff. Getting this wrestle here was pretty big. So now there's the only thing, yeah, he's going to have to pick it up with him. He really would have wanted to have hit the ogre first. But um, he just has to go for the pickup first. So it was a bit more, bit worse failure state for him. Um, but, you know, now he can try the success state things. That's how it works. Like, Blood Bowl is a lot about, like, mitigating. There's, there's the mitigating failure and maximizing success, if you like. So you've got, you've got to think about both of those things mm -hmm. when you're thinking about what to do. Oof. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great point as well, though, about the... About the the broadcast weekends about the featuring kind of the, the season finals for new for new players obviously for the community who kind of watch Blood Bowl um, consistently are very much part of it There's, be, like, naturally there'll be a lot of newer viewers too kind of like you want to learn more about it yeah. um, so I think it's great to kind of you know asking those questions are you know, and I'm sure I'll ask plenty of them Jimmy there'll <laughs> be a lot of questions from me too my friend um, thank you but it's, it's, it's great to um, it's great to have the insight too those years of experience paying off Jim yeah, only 33 years of playing this game. <laughs> only 33? <laughs> Though, to be fair, to be fair, the, the, the game from 1990 doesn't look much like the one now. The one from 94 is, is very similar to what we have now. Um, so he did all these rolls, and he, the fact that he failed that, that was a one in nine dodge. So the fact that he failed that means that we are going to get a very likely knock over the ball. But even if he does knock over the ball, there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of men to come with him and uh, react to it. Ah. Yeah, Stride is looking look, look, looking good for now. Yeah, looking you really see, I, good. I, I think you said as well, like the lizard men, like. Um, yeah, watching back some of, the, some of what you were saying yesterday, like the of the is it, is it 11, 11 teams, eleven lizard men teams entered the competition. Yes, yeah, eleven. They were they were the most popular race, like out of the fifty six people in the qualifiers, eleven yeah. of them chose lizard men, um, which was bad news for me with dwarves, but I, I managed to avoid them and lose to other people. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there, so of the eleven, there there was like a few variations. Some went two rerolls, some went three. And uh, some took a chameleon skink, some didn't. Some took a guard croxagore, some took like a sneaky git skink. Um, but the, the tabletop standard for pretty much ever has been six block saurus. And all three teams that qualified all had six block saurus. And they also wow. all had 12 players um, and only two rerolls. So, yeah, that was pretty, it was, you know, it was very it was kind of crazy, right? That out of all of them. Um, out of all 11 they were all exactly the same oh so he gets the ball down last re-roll gone to get the ball down get it like he had to but now now I don't know how he gets to it probably yeah. this guy this guy this guy's probably yeah yeah it's really rough it's really rough this this dude can come back and uh, maybe he oh wow okay does the GFI first interesting I don't know if he should do another one or not He's not going to, and this guy has to do both and pick it up, and he gets the pick up. Huge. There was, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure I like this um, because blitzers have got catch. Yeah, you can't see it, but they do. So if he was going to do this, he could have done it the other way, and he could have had the the dodge blitzer here, and the tackle blitzer could have gone for it twice and handed them. I don't know it's six and two threes one would have had a slightly better success state and the other had a slightly better fail state so he went with a fail state one which I guess he's just giving up on scoring completely now and he's just trying to escape this half at <laughs> he's just trying to escape this half at nil nil right now which is completely reasonable versus strider with lizard men <laughs> I think I think he's made the right call maybe maybe he shouldn't have tried to be greedy then this was the this was the right time to realise, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the writing's on the wall, I've just gotta hope I hope I survive. Yeah. He's looked down on the Well making those calls is, is obviously an enormous factor, isn't it, as well? Is knowing knowing the right times to do certain things is obviously gonna impact 
everything enormously. I mean, I, I'm I'm kind of interested to see how um, the underworld teams perform, <clears throat> seeing as like you know, the unpredictable. No, no one's kind of necessarily perfected underworld yet. Would you say that? Um, everyone except Eliod, yes. <laughs> Eliod is absolutely underworld expert. Um, a bit like Dimmy with knobs. <laughs> uh, Eliod is the absolute the absolute king of underworld. He's won a. He's won one or two majors. I think he's only won one major on Fumble with them. But um, you know, he's won big, big tournament there. He's played, he's played loads with them on Fumble. He's played with them a bit on Blood Bowl three. But like you know, it's basically the same rules. And um, yeah, he's really good. He's really, really good with them. Whereas I think the others, uh, like Artemis and Moomin Slayer, they are inexperienced and uh, they might, they might struggle a bit. But Underworld is so powerful. They might just mm. steamroll people anyway, so it, it is going to be interesting to see if they steamroll or if they uh, if their inexperience does cost them. Oh, that's a huge bonehead from the Crocs. Yeah, that was a, that was a real good scatter. Yeah, that was that was a really lucky scatter, so that the, the skinks couldn't get the ball. Um, because again, we've established Kiander is just trying to survive at this point. That's like that's his call. That's not even our call, you know. Like he's made it clear that that he is just trying to survive. And then that's obviously going to encourage uh, encourage Strider to go for the kill. There is a slight chance of this guy scoring now. So that that being that bonehead does maybe might encourage Kiander to roll some dice, but I, I don't think it will. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think it will. I think he's gonna. Stay given up at this point. So look at the brackets as well and see who um, loser bracket wise. They will be playing. Okay, so in there in the this is great. There's the, the document you sent you had the link you had in your um your video last night as well it was hugely helpful, bro. Oh yeah, <laughs> Breaky T. Yeah, Bra Breaky T is is amazing. He's just he's a like you know Twitch YouTuber. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, he is just. Oh well, did a double T. <laughs> he's like he's breaky TT on Twitch, so I sometimes I get it wrong. <laughs> so yeah, he's yeah, he's made all this, sure. this this amazing document that has that had all the play-ins covered, all the all the information. Absolutely mm. amazing, amazing. So stuff so me. helpful, yeah, yeah. So so the winner and loser of this play either Galentio or Diom Lord. Is that right? I think yes. so. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's correct. Interesting. Okay. So and I think Galentio and Diomlord have scheduled their game. Uh, Saturday at about three o'clock. That's where, that's when they're playing. So I, I thought yeah, I, mean, I thought they were playing Friday, but they weren't. Yeah, Diomlord versus Strider could be interesting. Lizardmen versus Lizardmen. I'd love to see that. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the sort of thing somebody new to Blood Bowl would say. <laughs> As anybody who's ever watched or commented on a lizard man mirror, <laughs> it's one of the most horrible things in Blood Bowl. <laughs> Gr would you say grueling is the word? It is grueling, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's weird. It's so weird. Like, it's it's just weird. It's grueling to watch. And it's like when you're playing, it's just, it all seems like, I don't know, both teams can do everything. So neither of them have have like the the normal advantages of their team so it just becomes weird mm. when like neither of you are used to like playing blood ball basically <laughs> i guess it comes down it comes down to a mistake like you mentioned like you know if someone does something kind of incorrect that will be the difference maker yeah yeah for sure yeah and uh yeah dion lord there are there are lots of dios to be fair most of them are good uh hammers there there is dion lord diamed uh, they're both in this tournament, and then there's also Dio Dionysian, and there's some other Dios as well. So yeah, but yeah, in this tournament, there's Dion Lord and Diomed are obviously both good because that's why they're in here. Diomed has is Russian with orcs, and Dion Lord is Italian with lizards. Yeah, zero power turns. Yeah, yeah, but there's another there's another power sub four. This is this is going to be the big block this turn. It's it's pretty much oh th these there's two big blocks this turn, and uh, if he gets either of them, it's bad times. He doesn't get, oh he does get this when he gets the wrestle yeah, so he can clear. Now he can clear this guy from the ball. Well, only if he powers him. No, oh, interesting. He might uh, he might block this guy first so he can hit from a better angle. 
because he wants to get like you know the the men standing around the ball make it harder to pick up so he wants to make sure he pushes him away from the ball um so to do that he's got to like hit from the right angle so he's either got to hit from here or here and if he hits from here the guard guy is going to help so he he, he wants really wants to try and get around the top side if he can or another player on the top side so he can hit from the bottom and it's, it's actually trivial to get somebody around the top oh well, no it's no no he has to block this guy he has to knock this guy over actually so that's why he brings that guy in to cancel the assist and he gets him down and yep Using a bit of time, isn't he here? In, in nearly into his time bank. Oh. Kian Dares used a lot. He used four minutes of his time bank. Yeah, they've, they've, so they've both got two minutes a turn and then seven thirty of time bank. And you know, in, in overtime, that can really mount up. I think in his last game, in his last playing game, Kian Dare totally ran out of. Uh, I know he did actually. He totally ran out of time, and Dimmy was going crazy. <laughs> Oh, the ogre's boneheaded. Oh, I didn't even see the ogre's boneheaded. But it's still a GFI, so that doesn't matter. But he should have moved. He should have moved him, probably a while. He, this should, this should have been a safe move. I guess no, because he wants him in there, so it shouldn't have been a safe move. Now he can move him in. Now that he's got the knockdown, this Sora should come in at the top. Oh, I don't like this. Ooh. That was that was a bit risky, a bit risky, but um, again he gets the payoff of hitting the guy again and getting more knockdowns and stuff. So it was just a little bit risky. Mm. He's also blocked his path for the skink now. Does he dodge? He might have to. He might have to dodge because he can like get to here and be safe or something. Yeah, I think he's got to dodge. Yeah, he can't. Go, he can't go back up. So yeah, he does the dodge, and then just stands there. Yeah, he didn't want to GFI. It, it GFI to here would have been safer. Oh, rush. Oh, he does do it. Yeah, he does do it to there. Oh, does he go down? Okay, he goes down. Interesting. That's interesting. I guess so. So by putting in the reroll, he's got like the one in six chance of failure plus the reroll. He's one in thirty-six to fail at. Whereas this dodge would be a one in nine, like a one in three, another one in three. So the, the kind of safer play would be well, not safer. Um, not using rerolls. The sort of almost greedier play would be to stand there and dodge this guy out. But obviously he was just too scared of failing this dodge because you know he's doing something by standing where he is. But um, yeah. using the last reroll is a bit scary. The good thing about skinks is they generally can just dodge, and they've got an inbuilt skill skill reroll anyway. So it's not too bad to be out of rerolls with lizard man. I mean, rap rapidly approaching the half here, aren't we? Do you think? Um, I mean, when it comes down to you know a situation like Kiander versus Strider here, do you think there's been a lot a lot learned in that kind of in that, that that first eight rounds, or do you think it's or I guess homework? has been done to a degree so you kind of know what to expect as well yeah i mean they 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 love I, to be fair i guess i don't know how much kian dare has played with an ability but i'm sure strider will have known you know everything going in um but yeah now it's it, it's it's hard now like it's it's really hard for kian dare like i you know, he's almost certainly going to be 1-0 down. I, what I don't know is whether Strider will be intending to go 2-0 up as soon as possible or if he'll try and, like, stall it out to, to score on turn 8. Like, the ideal drive for most people is, is scoring on turn 8. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, it looks like that's going to happen for Strider on Kian Dare's offence, which is, like, the absolute ultimate dream. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> dream drive for Strider. And he, he does have the option of just trying to break through. Because the thing is, uh, with Imperial and Ability, do get in the way really well with the Fend and the... Oh my god, he got another Kaz. Okay, I missed that. They stand in the way really well with their stand-firm guard guys. 
uh, but he's lost two of them. Um, so he might just go through and go 2-0 up. Uh, but yeah, it's looking, oh God, it's, I mean, don't say it's over, but yeah, this is pretty brutal. <laughs> pretty brutal. Hello, Diamond. Hello, World Sitar. <laughs> Kante was cruelly forced to play a better team than Goblins. They are the worst team in Blood Bowl 3, though. Um, but yeah, they, they got a good package. They got a good skill package. Um, Artemis thought about using them. I, I didn't, but I looked at them and, and, and thought, you know, they might not be terrible. <laughs> and obviously, yeah. So I think this, this was the right play here going for this, uh, what was it, 3-3-2-2 three, three, two, three, three, two, two to hit the ball. And obviously, Strider is not going to hit anything. He's just going to go in straight in for the score. Yeah. What's your, what's your prediction for the season, like the, the actual final final? Who'd you, who'd, what, which, two, which two coaches do you think are going to go all the way and go... Toe to toe. Have you got? Have you got a? Have you got like a chart at home? Like I, a, I, a chart, I, a prediction chart. I, <laughs> not not at home, but uh, there is one on Shalonge. There you go. There, a few of us, a few of us did predictions on Shalonge. Oh, um, wicked. Okay. Uh, my prediction Shalonge. is yeah, Shalonge <laughs> is uh, my prediction is Elliot winning it and uh, Strider, Elliot Strider in the final. There you go. That's that's my prediction. So. Um, I did pick Strider to lose at some point, but not this round. <laughs> and then come through the loser's bracket, yeah. Yep, so yeah, a few of us that uh, We didn't have that much time, right? Because there wasn't there wasn't that much time between them, you know, announcing it all and then the, the, the panicked scheduling of people who couldn't play on Saturday. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Have they, have they actually announced it officially now? Is there like a... A social post have they gone live or anything at all I have, I have no idea uh, no no I don't think there's anything outside of that discord but the, uh, they said that we could post about it you know so like I, this the breaky tease done it hasn't he and uh, Andy might have mentioned yeah. it and I mentioned it but yeah no like I think there's like the big official thing is coming uh, is coming tomorrow tomorrow, tomorrow yeah yeah it's gonna be um, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be I mean I'm looking I mean that has the thing with the scheduling things aside now if everyone's found a way to get their games done by, I think there's, the, there's was there like a deadline to have everything done by was it a certain time on Saturday? I think it was 6 p.m. on Saturday, yeah. Yeah. Um, but totally, though. But I think this is this is it. It's, it's, a, it's a first, isn't it? Kind of like changing things up a little bit here and trying something a bit new. And you learn from these things. So like next time around, scheduling-wise, okay, that's an absolute priority. Let's make sure it, yeah, X, Y, and Z, everyone's told about things. Uh, so they have plenty of time to change yeah. plans if necessary. And yeah. Yeah, and like maybe a bit of flexibility, like a bit of a bit of forcing and a bit of a bit of flexibility. I was thinking, oh, so this is this is pretty good. He set up like really anti blitz, um, which is which is what you should do in this situation where you're already ahead. Um, yeah, I think like maybe is it a bit like you know a bit a bit. Oh, well, it's worse now. <laughs> um, a bit, a bit, uh, you want a bit of flexibility and a bit forced. So like I would say like you know maybe do it like you know like the NFL. So like make like. You know how you've got like the third Monday night game, Thursday night game, and then like the three Sunday games. So if they had yep. like like if they had like three hour slots that people, you know, a, a few three hour slots, and then try then people can so then you could have say like if there are say Mr. Page like you know in uh, he's somewhere in Canada right like some some crazy land in Canada, and then there's like uh, there's Kadenik who's Australian, you know the Mad Jake was in the qualifiers and he's. He's somewhere in Asia. So like, do you know what I mean? Like all of these countries, it was lucky <laughs> for the competitors that everyone who qualified for the finals was in Europe, right? Because, yeah, you know, yeah, somebody true. somebody in China would have a big difficulty scheduling <laughs> all of their games in, in these windows. So, uh, yeah, isn't it, isn't it? I think Japan, I think China's like, what, eight hours ahead? Something wild? I have no idea. Yeah, neither do I. That seems like a, that's, a, that's a big, that's a big ask for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that makes cool. sense. The NFL, the NFL kind of infrastructure actually works pretty, I think, would be a good thing to kind of say you have these windows to get these things done. Yeah. Um, but for a, for a broadcast schedule, though, it's kind of like if there's a kind of a, a finite, we're doing this show on this day, it's, um, I don't know if it's more tricky, but in yeah. which way. For, for like for the one. for the previous ones, right? For like for the, for like the coming ones. And then obviously like you'll have, so you'll have like a match here. And then somebody will play in, like somebody will use that slot, won't they? Do you know what I mean? So you'll yeah. you'll have that somebody will fill, will fill each slot. You you'd make it few enough slots that they'll all be filled, 
but yeah. um, but like maybe he's not comfortably. <laughs> oh God, this is. <laughs> I didn't think what I was saying. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so something like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We are used to have the, the culture because it's all, it's mostly it's mostly old blokes, right? And and having a week to schedule. So so that I thought that was like a bit of a halfway house doing something like that. But because yeah, you know, like the the hard scheduling on on one day is is people generally won't like. <laughs> it won't nose plague, you know. I'm try I'm trying my best. <sighs> yeah, that is the um that's definitely the toughest part of it, isn't it? It's kinda of like, you know, adapting to real life and, and what you have to sort out from a you say most you say mostly old blokes. Jimmy, you look a day over twenty one, mate. Come on. <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Do you know what? Don't look at day over sixteen right now with that dance player. <laughs> Mate, was it Luke Littler? Is that his name? Yeah, yeah. Sixteen. I mean, I don't know if he saw his kind of interviews, his post matches. Like, what are you going to spend your money on? He was like, I don't know, you know, a bottle of Fanta, you know, some new vapes. It was like, Gee. great. What, what, what an aspirational sports i mean it was incredible though 16 years old to do that is and playing in front of that massive crowd as well is that is a huge feat i don't know how he did that yeah incredible absolutely no, incredible. incredible um so yeah so so like yeah obviously that the actual finals you know absolutely have it on one day and this is it and and you know and and if it was all set up like you know well it, it was kind of i think it was all decided wasn't it but then just it wasn't shared with like the qualifiers it was just the final 16 whereas if they'd shared it at the qualifying stage then maybe people would have pulled out uh, in the qualifying stage like so either either mm. or i think would have been would have been better but uh yeah maybe it's a mix of like absolute hard scheduling for the finals and then bef like yeah. these kind of matches before Maybe give them the the flex of, you know, e even just a few time slots to uh, to to help overseas people and stuff. And even if they won't be then featured on the broadcast, at least, at least like you know, some you could have some kind of like some kind of broadcast or something, couldn't you? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the um, for the uh, for the, for, I, I, yeah, I don't think if we're on the actual on the broadcast this first weekend, this weekend's coming up. If people can't play their their matches during that particular window i think kind of you know casting and chatting over kind of highlights of things that happened previously this week to get to where we are in the competition i think is equally as beneficial to, to fans watching at home i think you're right the heart there has to be a hard kind of a hard uh, a hard kind of broadcast time for those the actual finals the following weekend but um would you do, do you think that, do you think that would work like having the, the highlights of, of the of the winners brackets, lowest brackets matches in that kind of window, if if you know, if players couldn't facilitate in time getting there when they need to. Uh, the problem is, I don't think Blood Bowl is really like a game of highlights, right? It's 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 loads of like micro decisions that that lead to uh, like compounding board state over several turns. Like you know, you, you wouldn't do a, like a chess tournament and go, "Oh, that was a good check." <laughs> Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's oh wow! I, you know, or if you do, it would just be one move, wouldn't it? It'd be like, oh my god, look at him take that bishop! Like that's probably yeah. something that happens. But like, so while you know, like yeah, they, 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 there are there are highlights, there are highlights, but um, there are there are cool moves and stuff. But you can't you can't guarantee on them happening or knowing when, like you know. It'd be a lot of trawling through vods to like find when they happened and stuff, and it a big job to to do highlights. I I actually did do a highlights thing once uh, when I was in Rebel, which is like the biggest community league in Blood Bowl Two, and mm -hmm. uh, it was all it was pretty tough, like trying to find highlights. I, I mostly just did like a condensed replay rather than highlights. <laughs> so it was yeah, it's a bit tricky. It is a bit tricky. So. Um, yeah, yeah like I, there, I there are highlights. Or there are there are cool like touchdowns and chain pushes and things like like um, like Elliot's touchdown that he scored versus Seabros was incredible. So like that could be a that could be a highlight for sure. I mean that's probably going to be the highlight of the tournament. But then it's just yeah, going to yeah. be you know it doesn't last very long. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know like it, that highlight would be like well there's a minute done. So so you could what you could watch replays of them maybe like replays of some of the yeah games. replays yeah that'll work. That could be okay. 
Yeah, so I guess I guess going to just to just to alleviate some of the pressure of having to play at a certain time. If it really is a, a huge um, problem, then you know, watching a replay it would you know would suffice for sure. Just so we can, I guess, it just contextualizes what's coming up and what you know it sets kind of things up for the next round, doesn't it as well? But yeah, um, it would be really. Fun. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to the uh, to the actual finals weekend too. I think that'd be really great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very looking forward to that. That should be super excited. Very, very, very good last minute, last minute call up that I got, and I was, yeah, this is this is pretty cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> From no idea about it to being involved in it, it was, yeah, it was great. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, the, the great thing is, it's for you, it's a, it's a, it's a newer title, but I'm, uh, you know, learning the likes of yourself and Andy and everyone else in the community who's kind of like, you know, oh, do this, and everyone's asking questions and kind of sharing. It, it makes it such a. It's so much more um, helpful as well. No, you know, kind of learning as you go, but I think because naturally players will find this. They're kind of putting it putting on a bigger scale now, for broadcasting it out. You know. um, you'd hope there'll be a kind of a new kind what of wave of, kind of, Lord of players the Rings find cricket it. Game. They kind of go, hey, this is this is a bit of me. This, um, and I think that's uh, you know, we could, someone could have the same kind of situation. Someone's at home right now playing Hero Quest, Jimmy. They're <laughs> playing Hero Quest. They need something in their life. They suddenly go, hold on a second. <laughs> What's this on Nacon's Twitch channel? I'm gonna check this bad boy out. Yeah, well, with, with, you know, like being like a big giant nerd is a lot more mainstream now, isn't it? With Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. So, like, you know, yeah, there, there is, there is definitely the, yeah, there is stuff there for sure. And uh, <laughs> Ori Lens is some kind of Lord of the Rings cricket game. Yep, that's the sort of thing it is. Yeah, well done. <laughs> a Lord of the Rings cricket game. <laughs> wow, I love that. That's a pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm going. I'm going to another kind of a, a board game, um, kind of a rabbit hole now. Do you remember a game called The Key to the Kingdom? Do you remember that game? I do it's not Wadding, remember that. It's no. a Waddington's game. If anyone on the chat kind of remembers that game, I remember that being a really, really bloody good game as well. Wow. It was. It was more of a traditional board game, but it had multiple layers. It was kind of. It kind of in that kind of hero quest kind of era. Hmm. Dwarfs and the whirlpools and. Check it out! Check it out! It was it, it was it was like a really good game. Yeah, I feel sad that I haven't heard of it now. <laughs> it was damn good. I want to chat room a key to the kingdom. I was all over that. It looks pretty great. Wow! I wish I'd played that. <laughs> oh, you can get it. You can get it on eBay for like pretty cheap, I think. But it was like um, I just remember it was it was very cool because one of those games where it had like, so the way it worked was. You've got six different towers, different fortresses, right? You've got like the Evil Tower, um, Demon Castle, different fortresses. And in one of those fortresses is a card which has the key, the key to the kingdom. But you don't know which one. So you basically got to go to every single realm and defeat all the monsters and get to the end goal to open up the card. And if it's not the key to the kingdom, you got to go back into the different <laughs> whirlpool and try a different kind of realm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it was fire, man. It was good. It's good times. Nice. I love that game. It's <laughs> I need to get used to this back in my life. <laughs> nice. Oh wow, dub scores four rerolls though, okay, and uh So what 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 becomes interesting here is that you you've got the reroll management and like, you know, playing safe aspect and and stopping strider scoring because it's playing on defense now is really hard. You know how you're saying like do you, do you do you try and score yourself and stuff? Like he has to try and score himself, right? Cuz he's 1-0 down. So it's not even good enough to stop lizards. He hasn't just got to stop lizards. He's got to somehow you know, score on them, and and if they score at any time, he just loses. Because if you, you know, blood ball, you don't come back from two 0 down. Like maybe maybe he's one game in a thousand, you can, but um, or like if he would killed loads of players. But so if he goes two 0 down, he doesn't come back here, and there. So he's he's got to play. It's really tough. He's got to play conservative enough that he doesn't leave a breakaway on, and he's got to somehow try and get enough pressure that he that he that he scores on defense. So it's really it's mega mega tough for and there right now. Advanced hero. Oh yeah, I played Advanced Hero Quest. Yeah, that again. That was more like you know a bit like Blood Bowl, wasn't it? And it was uh, on Nightmare. Nightmare was a was a great TV show. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I liked Advanced Hero Quest. But yeah, oh man, yeah. I, I did love Hero Quest. Yeah. Uh, Motti, a hundred percent. I absolutely made the jump from Hero Quest to Space Crusade. Oh my oh, God, yeah. Space Crusade! <laughs> Jesus! Oh my God, I forgot this. Is oh my God. <laughs> See, this is this is a t this is a time as well. A space Crusade for me. When I when is this when you could actually you could paint the characters too, couldn't you? Could have someone that like the Marines and stuff. Yeah, yeah. 
I was definitely like a. Oh, what a great time this was! What a great time to be alive. Nineteen ninety was well, was the goat, was a goat of a year. Oh my god, what a year! It really was. God, so good. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, I would love to bring back Nightmare. Was a didn't someone? I think randomly so, that that TV show Nightmare. Oh um, yeah. Dude, I um, I recently someone I saw a clip that someone finished it. Someone actually on the on the TV show completed Nightmare. Yeah. And I, I didn't think that ever happened. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. It was so round. I don't know why I found out about that, but someone sent me a clip, and I was like, "Oh my god, Nightmare was complete." I, I just thought it was one of those shows that you couldn't do. Yeah. Um. Holy crap, man! I got to find that again. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah, they brought it. They brought it back as well, like in, uh, in, in like I don't know if it was just in, uh, like it you or know, in a theater or whatever, but they definitely brought back um, Nightmare a little bit. And so uh, one of one of one of my friends, um, I called John Robertson. I don't even know who he is. No. Um, he created a show um, called The Dark Room. I don't know if you guys in chat have heard about this, um, and it's kind of like an interactive, kind of like an interactive. Um, uh, kind of game show where it's very nightmare esque, but he does it kind of on like a main stage, and it always starts with you're in a dark room and basically on screen like it's kind of it's one of those kind of old school adventures. Like, do you want to go left to this or right to this? Do you want to light this torch or do this? And there's always kind of like you lose points and, and it's but it's it's very funny and very interactive. Like it's really good fun. Um, but that's kind of that's kind of similar. I don't know if anyone in the chat has seen that, but it's it's really similar. Yeah, it's really really good. Nice. So I'm going off my tangent again here, Jamie. Sorry, sorry, mate. It's okay, it's Space okay. Crusade. Yeah, it's yeah. lit up my it lit up my world <laughs> hearing the word Space Crusade together. Oh yeah, well that's I mean you know a lot of the people in this community you know have, have been funneled in from Space Crusade and Hero Quest and then have found the the plastic crack of Warhammer and 40k and have been addicted to this kind of thing for a lot of years. <laughs> so yeah, and, oh uh, I love it, love it. Ah, I see, Steve. Yeah, I, I remember. I nearly, I nearly entered uh, Nightmare. Well, I thought for sure we were going to be on it, but, but I never did. Me and my friends. You, that, I'm sure we would have won. <laughs> you nearly entered Nightmare. Yeah. Oh, oh what, that would have been amazing. <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? I like, could. Could you imagine? I would have that video for the rest of my life. <laughs> Ten-year-old Jim. <laughs> Not even ten. Oh, I love that. <laughs> should, should I? Should I confess something to you? It's not a nightmare. Um, I was a contestant on Are You Smarter Than a Ten Year Old? Do you remember that TV show? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Were you smarter than a ten year old? <laughs> I wasn't smarter than a ten year old. No one's smarter than a ten year old, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was fun, dude. It was it was a good time. It was a real good time. It was real fun. It was it was very interesting to see like a game show and how it's actually made behind the scenes, like a TV program. Yeah. And the stopping and starting aspect to it but um i tell you what being in the hot seat and being like you know you can imagine if you were like on nightmare or you're on a, uh, on a show like that mm. being the contestant and the pressure that comes with that knowing that you've got to do you know you've you, you, everyone's watching and if you screw this up you're a, you know and I, there was me stood there and i'm being like told okay I, uh, here's, here's a here's a question for a four-year-old about books <laughs> i thought oh, oh god this is going to be awful hey this is going to be dreadful um it was all right Mm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Oh my god! I was just thinking. I was just about to say, oh, this is good. He can block this guy as well. That he dub scold. <laughs> so, he just he just randomly destroys himself. I don't. I think he can take this dub skull. The problem is, is taking it and keeping those rerolls. The rerolls don't matter if you've lost. And he's now he's taken two stuns, and he's about to get carved open probably. But uh, we shall see. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. A TV show like that. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Yeah, that's... it was really. The thing is, the one I was on was called "Are You Smarter Than Your Ten Year Old?" So my, at, the, at the time, my, my little brother was ten, and it was actually the, the kids that kind of like the contestants that helped with questions. It was my little brother and four of his mates from school, and they were the kids. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like a family affair. It was it was great, dude. We had to do we had to do an audition for um we had to audition for the show to get on it and uh they said they said to all the different kids and pair like the, the contestants like whether it's a sibling or a kid that you whatever they said um you, you need to prepare like a two minute piece of something original for us something kind of random for us and uh we're like what like what they said you know could do anything you want like just make it your own and kind of show us kind of like your relationship in this two minute whatever you could choose to do so i think a lot of a lot of our kids and like their you know their kind of um the older parents whatever did like poems or read like a story together whatever and me and my little brother went 
should we just like reenact the opening of Raiders of the Lost Ark? And we were like, yeah, let's freaking do that. So I basically played the cave, like all the cave, like the spiders, the spikes, the whole thing. And he played Indiana Jones. And we reenacted the opening of the film for the, for the, for the BBC production team. <laughs> It was mental. And we actually, before we actually did it, we, we said, this is what we're going to do. And they went, just so you know, you're in. All right, go for it. They loved it so much. I thought, amazing, amazing. That's great. Oh, that's great, dude. <laughs> yeah, everything stunned. Four stuns, one nil down, three players out. So he's down to 10 players. He's, he's lost his two guard blockers. Four stuns. Yeah, this is... Uh... This is over, surely. It's over, yeah. But but you know, Elliot wouldn't say it's over. Elliot, Elliot, big streamer, used to be. He's, he stopped streaming recently. Um, but you know, he always said, "Don't say it's over." But even even Elliot <laughs> would say this is over. <laughs> it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good game yeah. for tangents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, and like, look, this is how this is how crazy Blood Bowl is a lot of the time. Like the dice, the dice really do decide it. It's. Uh, as m- yeah. you know, as much as we all take it a bit too seriously, um, well, not we all do. A lot of us take it a bit too seriously, and you know, some people desperately want it to be like you know, kind of some kind of esport type thing, but it's like it's the dice make it so swingy that it's uh, you know, it's a bit of a it's a bit of an issue some you know for, for sometimes because like you know, this is so hard for Key and. Uh, Those are the second half. The second half definitely feels like it's been moving more fluidly as well. Like turns have been quicker. The clock's not been run down as fast. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I guess just because it's so easy for Stride. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Stride was asking so many questions on defense, and then Kiande was having to solve them and stuff because you know this just this just brick wall of strength. It's like it's brutal. And now he's finally made this random cas, but it's, it's just come too late. It's it it sure does look over, it, but. You know, may- maybe not, right? Maybe not, but the the, the stuns, the stuns look really bad. Mm. I'm, I want to channel on my inner Elliot and and be positive, but I'm struggling, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm struggling. Yeah, the good thing is, like, with it being the finals, people are people are going to give it their all, and like, they're never going to give up, and and you know, like, they will keep fighting till the end, no matter how stupid the dice are, and like, you know. It, Strider can still mess this up or have like crazy dice, right? That could have been a one in one in twelve th- one in twelve hundred and ninety six chance could have happened there, which sounds small, <laughs> but it does happen, right? It does happen. There was a one in a th- there was a one in thirteen hundred chance more or less for uh, for him to be in a bad spot all of a sudden. So, but you know that that's what we're looking at, yeah, point one percent chances. <laughs> um, not good, but it does happen. Or we could just see like a really stupid mistake, you know, like I've made them and everyone else has. So there's a chance of a stupid mistake and a chance of crazy dice. But yeah, not as interesting as Nightmare or <laughs> Space Crusade or Hero Quest. <laughs> I'm so sorry I hijacked the conversation with my 90s board games knowledge. No, it's great. Just, like, it's I really, great. I got excited. I got really excited. It's great. That's um, what we need. <laughs> So many of my friends in my in my real life just never want to talk to me about these things, but I feel like I'm safe here. Safe. This is a safe place for me. <laughs> it is, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like therapy. <laughs> it's a great era, though. That was a, that was a, that was a really great time, like that um, in the ni- early nineties. Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Some of the best tangents that won't get Jimmy demonetized. Yeah, thanks, Jay Bazzi. <laughs> yeah. We, it, it, Bear with me, Jimmy. I'm right back, mate. I'm right back, mate. Okay. We we do need more wholesome tangents uh, rather than you know talking about a lot of the other things. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, yeah, he doesn't even doesn't even need to reroll this, right? He just keeps the two rerolls in case of something complete insanity. There's there's like there's got to be a chance, right? There's got to be a chance he can block him and chain him into there. But he doesn't get the second hit, does he? So he can't actually chain him into the cage. Um, he could, he could like, he could pow him and chain this guy so he can six plus in. That's about the best he's got. Tag, tag the, tag the Saurus. Um, 
chain chain him away. So it's just one dodge to 2D with Wrestle. Six plus for 2D Wrestle, yeah. He can six plus in with a tackle. Oh, he can just come around the back. Yeah, okay, okay, that's better. I'm incorrect. So a GFI. A GFI, an in from the back. I think it might be better coming in from the side than coming in from the back, like, and better knocking this guy over and everything. But, um, yeah, I guess this is easier, isn't it? Six plus in. And, like, six plus in for a 2D isn't crazy at all, is it? Especially with two rerolls. That's, what, 30 into a 75% knockdown with a reroll? So that's, what, about 80-odd? So 90-odd? 90-odd, is it? So what's 75%? I should know that, shouldn't I? An idiot. 75% oh. of what? Uh, 75 of 75 percent of 25. <laughs> Uh, like 18. There you go. Plus 75, 93, 93%-ish for that to work. Um, so 93% of 30 <laughs> is about 28, isn't it? It's about 28%. And he didn't go for it though. So I think he should have. There was a 28% chance there. Like that's not terrible, is it? I think he should have gone for the 28%. Because I don't think this is as good as 28%. Like you know, I don't think. These moves, although safer to get to this, I don't think that overall odds. Um, while this was guaranteed to make it more complicated, so th so this was this was guaranteed to make things more complicated. But um, had he had he made that twenty eight percent chance, things would have got very complicated. I think he needs to stand one of these to tag the Saurus and then dodge the other one out. So let's say let's say this goes the distance to a one zero victory, or a, or a victory for Strider in any capacity. What is that? Do you think that what's the knock on effect here in terms of the competition? Then if you, you have uh, Strider goes forward and takes either um, Galentio or Dion Lord in the next round, naturally, Kiander goes down to the, the lower bracket. Um, what do you think would make for the best matchup? Obviously, lizards versus lizards. We don't really want to see that. So obviously, presumably Galentio versus Kia. Uh, I mean, Dion Lord versus. Kiander in the lower bracket, Strider versus Galentia in the winner's bracket. Would that is that a possibility, do you think? I mean it is, yeah, yeah. I I, I fancy uh Dion Lord to beat Galentio, but uh, it's it's pretty close actually. Um Lizards versus Elves, like it's it's the the elves aren't very good elves, but elves do quite well versus lizards. So I think it's it's I think it's a pretty fifty fifty game. And uh I guess better would be, I guess, the, the underdog story of Galentio winning and making it Elves versus Lizards, you know, twice in a row. Um, yeah. Um, but whatever happened, and then, yeah, Kiander, you know, I guess if Kiander, he would probably rather Galentio loses so he gets to play Pro Elves <laughs> instead of getting smashed by Lizards again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's, it's uh, like I think for live. I mean, hope for what I'm hoping for is like for the casting live will be yeah. uh, Elliot Cruz in the second round. Elliot's playing Diomed, and I think that's a pretty close game. And Cruz is playing Moomin Slayer, which which is still close. Like they're, they're all close, right? Like even even though lots of people have picked Elliot to win, like you know that's only thinking is like you know maybe he's fifty. Four percent in each game or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like it's still it's still super easy for Elliot to just go out in the in the first two games. Mm -hmm. But um, if we get Elliot versus Crucifer, I think that would be an incredible second round game. Uh, like the winners bracket second round would be unbelievable. Um, but yeah, I think I think watching wise, I think uh, I think Galentio Strider would be better. Um, but then that's really terrible for Key and Dare getting, getting hit by lizards. So yeah, maybe the lizard. And look, the lizard mirror is probably like probably better with you know this kind of format. And yeah, he just bangs it in. There's no yeah, no yeah. need to try and stall again. And this is why I think Key and Dare had to go for that twenty eight percent chance um, because it doesn't feel good going for a twenty eight percent chance. But um, Basically, not going for it almost guaranteed the score. That he had that freedom of being one nil up already. It, it would have been interesting if, like, if uh, Strider had received in the first half. Like, if that had been the first half, then he would have probably had to try and stall it and not give uh, Kiander the chance to score in two. Whereas now, of course, knowing that he's one nil up, he's got no 
no uh, no reason not just to bang it in straight away. Yeah, convincing a convincing win, I think, for um, for Strider here. And as you mentioned, like, the, the, just looking at the matchups there as well, like there's some. I think we've got some some great ones coming up here. You said like Crucifer versus Eliard will be very interesting. Um, I mean, Artemis and Andy, I'm looking forward to seeing. So I think that, you know, it'll be, uh, you know, I think Artemis is very much focusing on, like, damage, isn't he, as well? Like, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a few teams who are, I think, do you think damage is a big factor here as well? Like, the, the, the harder you hit, the more opportunity it gives you, or is that kind of not as lucrative upon a play style? What do you think? I mean, it's looking pretty, it's looking pretty, uh, you know, effective against yeah. K and Dare, isn't it? So, yeah, it it's, is. it's, but it, it's dice. It's the, the problem is it's like, it's dice based, right? And you, you can have like, uh, yeah. you know, you can have like the, the hardest hitting, meanest orc team in the world and you can play versus like some little fancy pro elves. And if they roll the dice, you know, you get smashed off the pitch. So, um, it, it, there's a lot of variance. It's it's a it's a it's a risky thing to build into, because it's so easy. Like it's so out of your control, basically. Which seems sort of funny because obviously the other things aren't really you know positioning's in your control, but you know block dice aren't in, like no, you know none of the dice are in your control. But I guess you have more say in positioning and control of the board than you do in like you know will you will you know armor randomly break. Um, but you know you can generate more hits and stuff. So it's it's more the generation of hits and things like that and board state is going to be where the good players mm -hmm. get to show how good they are. Whereas you could give any any person out of Mrs. Team and you know he he will steamroll people sometimes. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm hyped. I'm hyped, dude. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. Um, this this has been this has been uh, tons of fun though, man. I'm looking forward. I'm looking. I'm, I feel like it's. Um, I'm looking forward to kind of what we're kind of going to get up to the next two weekends the action we're going to see and, and, and the fun we'll have on the broadcast too which i think is be really fun for the hopefully fun for you guys watching at home too so yeah yeah thanks and uh so yeah we can wrap up the youtube thank you uh very much adam it was it was great it was great to uh to chat with you and stuff about, about mostly about board games from the 90s but you know a little bit of blood bowl and uh yeah congratulations strider commiserations key and uh and uh so strider goes to the through to the winner's bracket and uh, we'll get a second chance and i'll oh, look at that cyanide in the chat as well and thanks to thanks of course to yeah cyanide nikon and uh is it zqsd for organizing all of this and uh yep thanks for watching everyone don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic <laughs>